kids, how are you? Hope you're all doing really, really well and keeping healthy. Things are looking much more happier now with the lockdown, starting to come a bit easy. So um, I thought we'll just do a recipe that you'll all enjoy. Um, I'm really, really happy that you guys have been giving me great feedback with the videos, um, with the lessons I've been doing. And um, some of you had requested some more recipes, so I can't do all of them in one session. But um, what I am going to do is I really like the idea of the patlijan that, um, uh, was it Ingu or uh, Amelda suggested? So I think we're going to go along with that today. And then in the next, next lesson, I'll probably be doing some small tips and tricks of how to do some low calorie um, meals and, uh, you know, some snacks for during the day. Because I do, I do know that uh, a lot of people are put on lots of weight during the lockdown and, uh, and you're all looking for some recipes and some tips of how to have some low calorie meals. So we'll focus on that next week. But this week we're going to do some patlijan and that's a Turkish, a Turkish delight. Um, it's quite fam quite famous in Turkey and it's uh, yeah so the patlijan is a very famous uh, dish in Turkey it's made in different ways um, you can have it either as a side dish or as a main dish um, it can be baked it can be fried but um, as one of you guys were mentioning patlijan has a lot of uh, tomatoes a lot of tomatoes and a lot of tomatoes mean a lot of acid so I'm going to show you a recipe that will have um, contain much less tomatoes and will be much more healthier so so a typical patlijan dish will be fried um, you'll get aubergines and you'll dice them and then you will fry them but this one in particular that I'm making today um, it's gonna be uh, done in the oven so I pre-baked these aubergines in the oven um, there's nothing you need to do with this all you need to do is just rub a little bit of olive oil put them in an oven dish and then if you can get a heavy metal dish to put on top and the reason for that is when you do put aubergines in the oven, sometimes they can explode. And when they do explode, you'll have like a, a disaster in your oven and it will be a nightmare to clean. And, and also by doing that, you're preserving the juices um, in the aubergine. Otherwise, they will all leak out and explode and you'll, you'll lose all the goodness. Right, so we have five aubergines and one pepper. Now... I'm not just going to be making a patlijan dish, but I'm also going to be making baba ganoush. And so two aubergines will be used for baba ganoush and three will be used for the patlijan. And we also have the pepper that will go into that as well. Um, so first of all, I'm going to show you how to make the uh, patlijan. Patlijan, it's like I mentioned before, um, you can have it as a side dish, you can have it as a main dish. But we in particular are going to be making something that you can have as a main meal. Because as we are going to be going into doing recipes, I love calorie um, this particular dish is going to be uh, low in calories but it's going to be quite filling as well and I'm going to do some tweaks so in a normal typical recipe where you would be putting sugar we will put some honey where you're going to fry the aubergines we've obviously baked them and where you put um, tomato puree we'll be adding some yogurt and where you will um, fry the onions and the garlic we're going to be slightly sorting them in just a little bit of olive oil and you wouldn't really find olive oil in patlijan you will find a normal uh, sun, uh normal normal oil any kind of oil that you use but we're going to be using olive oil so hopefully you would enjoy that and you can have it with a um with a dip as a dip or as a main meal all right so let's start with um peeling the aubergines now um, some of you will probably say, well, the skin is the main bit, because I always tell you how don't peel your carrots, don't peel your potatoes, don't peel your apples and pears, but I am going to be peeling the skin of the aubergine, but by roasting these, we are preserving all the goodness, because all the goodness of the skin has leaked into the fresh, into the flesh, so we don't have a problem with peeling um, the skin and discarding it. So I'm going to be peeling the skin of the aubergines, now just a note that once you do peel this, once you do bake these in the oven, leave them on the side for about 20 minutes that way they will um, kind of soak up and get a little bit soggy if you peel them straight away you're going to start getting ashes on your fingers because the skin's still going to be kind of rusty and um, and flaky and you don't want that and this just makes it so much more easier to peel right it's like um, like potatoes if you were to boil them in hot water 
and then leave them for a little while it's just so much more easy to peel whereas if you try to peel them while they're still hot it takes double the time and then you take off um, double the amount of flesh which you don't really want to so can you see how easy that is and that way we're not having too much flesh that we're going to be wasting right that just looks so beautiful right so we've done one here and we'll do the rest as well okay another way of making um baking these um aubergines is slightly a bit more messier is that you can put them directly onto your cooker onto the heat onto the fire um and just roast them on there that's if you want a really nice kind of barbecue taste but not everybody likes that kind of burnt barbecue taste if you're doing a baba ghanoush then a typical baba ghanoush recipe requires that but i'm just showing you some shortcuts and easy ways of baking because not all of us have the patience to do uh, to clean the cooker after we um uh, roast something on on direct fire now aubergines are full of lots of vitamins and proteins um, and it's such a delicious uh, and versatile vegetable to cook with. Initially, um, aubergines were discovered by the Asian continent and then slowly it kind of uh, travelled to, um, to Turkey and Turkey kind of just claimed the aubergines and they have aubergines in nearly every single, every, every single, you know, famous dish. Right. So I'm just going to peel this and it just looks so good. And again, when you bake these aubergines, um, once you kind of take off the skin, there's not much you really need to do with this. So in the typical uh, patlijan recipe, um, you would have to chop them, fry them. And when you fry them, you kind of lose um, all the nutrients. And with this, we don't, we're not going to be doing any further cooking. If you do look up recipes for patlijan, you will see different kind of techniques of making them. I'm just doing a way that's quick and easy um, and also in a way that will preserve um, all the goodness of aubergines. All right, and you can see all these juices, they're not going to go to waste. We're going to be using these juices as well. All right, we're going to do the same with the pepper. With the pepper, it's up to you if you want to take the skin off or not. I'm just taking it for the sake of just showing you that you can take them off. I'm just going to take off half of the skin of the pepper and pepper in this particular dish is used for two reasons one is because it's going to give its taste um, obviously uh, pepper has a kind of a fiery kick without this without the spice but also um, as I told you before a typical patlijan will have a lot of tomatoes but because we want to kind of reduce the amount of acid we're going to have um, in the in the in the dish by adding the red pepper, it's going to kind of imitate the colour and the look of the tomatoes and um, it's going to just give it the whole kind of feel and taste. Right, so there we go and I just need to scrape out the seeds and the seeds are done. Now, do you know what girl, ladies, half of our dish is already made. Now we just need to do the sauce and the sauce is not going to be like a typical sauce that you'll make for a curry where you're going to be sauteing the onions and the tomatoes for ages and ages the whole difference in this dish is that everything is going to be slightly raw um, except for the garlic because the garlic the more you kind of roast it or saute it the more you would um, enhance the flavors okay and we're just going to take out the seeds of uh, you don't need to take out the seeds I'm just taking out some of the seeds uh, just to reduce the seedy texture a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to put this on the side now and we're going to get on with the sauce. All right, ladies, for the sauce, we have here three tomatoes, two garlic, um, one onion, and like I said, instead of the sugar, we're going to be substituting with some honey. And for the spices, really, really simple, salt, pepper, and chili powder. Um, we do need uh, parsley, is it parsley? Yes, parsley, but unfortunately I don't have parsley, I've got coriander. But for me, it's going to give exactly the same kind of taste and texture. Um, but just imagine this is parsley. I'm sure you've got... All right, so I'm going to get on first now and chop the onions. Now, again, if you're making this for a um, full-on dish, um, a main meal, you don't need to worry about the size of the onions. You can just uh, 
you can just cut them as you like small big it doesn't really matter let me get my sharp knife out but for the sake of you know your food has to look good you know for, for the sake of you wanting to eat it um, and look appealing to the eye so um, yeah and as you know my knife skills are not amazing but I will try and do my best Right, so we are going to dice these onions and like I mentioned before in a typical patijan you will have lots of um, oil so not only do they fry the aubergines in oil but then they use a lot of oil um, for the sauce but we're just going to be using a little bit of olive oil and please do remember and don't think it's strange that we're going to be adding in the tomatoes before the onions look brown. Uh, this isn't a Asian. This isn't an Asian recipe. It's a Turkish recipe, and it's completely different. So you're not going to um, brown the onions too much, or you're not going to add, in fact, at all brown the onions. Okay, let me just get this going. All right, so. I'm just going to show you the olive oil I'm using. This is my own olive oil. Um, it's a Turkish, it's a Spanish brand. So if you are going to be using olive oil, just go an extra mile and then buy a good quality one because it will just benefit you in a million ways. Right? So while I've put the onions on, I'm going to get peeling the garlic. And I'll come back to you once all the garlic is peeled. Right, the garlic cloves are all peeled now and I've put them into my magic blender, mini chopper. Okay, now it's really important that you make sure that the garlic is crushed really, really finely. Uh, that, this is why I use the chopper because I didn't, I don't have the patience to sit there and chop um, garlic to a fine um, amount. So yeah, you have to make sure that this is um, chopped really, really finely. I'm not going to be using all of this for the patijan. Some of it's going to be used for the baba ghanoush. And um, just yeah, make sure, shake it once. Make sure it's um, really, really fine. Now I'm going to add this in with the onions, and at the same time, or a couple of minutes after, I'm going to add two spoons of tomato paste. And I forgot to mention about the tomato paste. And tomato paste is what just gives it its really, really red kind of vibrant color as well. So we're going to go to the pan now. Okay, so in goes the garlic and we're going to spank up the heat a little bit and then we're going to just saute these. And can you see, you can hardly see any oil. You can hardly see any oil, any olive oil. Right. So what we're going to do is actually towards the end, when we lay all the dish, we're going to sprinkle some olive oil on top as well. And that will kind of just fill in the gaps for that kind of oily texture that you were looking for. But it's going to be kind of a good um, oil. And if you want, I forgot to mention, you can use coconut oil, which is just as good. Very good in saturated fats um, and uh, really easy to absorb. Right. So now we're going to chop the onions and add the onions in. And I'm going to just lower the heat while we do the onions. Right, and now we're going to do the tomatoes. Just in case you guys get interrupted by the drilling sound, my husband is doing some building work in the garden, so yeah, unfortunately, that noise cannot go away. And uh, do keep your fan on. I haven't kept my fan on because it will interrupt with the video, but you don't want your house to be smelling of onions and garlic. Right. So in a normal um, patlikan dish, you would probably have about uh, six tomatoes, but here we have three. And I'm not purely doing this um, just because you have requested a low acidy kind of um, recipe, but also I would probably le add less tomatoes as well, um, because I feel it takes away the taste of the aubergines and it overpowers the dish. And again, depending on whether you're going to be using this as making this as a main recipe, as a main meal or as a side, um, some people would even preserve this in a jar and use it as like a pickle or like a kimchi kind of um, side, side thing. 
and that's actually quite nice as well because the longer you preserve um, preserve this uh, the more the flavors enhance but you have to be very careful and make sure that you sterilize the the jar properly um, a lot of people complain that um, within one or two days they'll get fungus on their jars um, so you've got to take all the precautions if you are going to be pickling and if you're used to it, obviously you're used to it but then we'll have to add a bit more acid with that with lemon and vinegar to preserve and enhance the flavors all right we're gonna go back to the pan now Okay, so as you can see, the onions and um, the garlic are, have been sautéing for a good few minutes. Um, you know, I wish I could just tell you how it smells. It smells absolutely beautiful. And now, before it goes any more brown, we're going to add in the tomatoes. And like I mentioned before, this is not a curry, so we're not going to be cooking this for too long. And we don't want to lose the shape of the tomatoes um, that much either. Okay? While this is sauteing, we're going to add in two spoons of tomato paste. Okay. And then we're just going to give that a good mix. So, um, Indy, the, the patli jam that you will probably buy in restaurants would be a lot more um, red probably and a lot more oily a homemade one you know you can adjust it to the way you want and make it low fat so the rest ones that you get in restaurants they just contain so much oil and so many extra sugars that you don't really need okay and then at this point we're going to add in the honey because um, in a normal recipe you would add the sugar and the sugar will kind of stabilise um, and enhance the flavour of the tomatoes. The honey will do exactly the same thing because it's not about any kind of a chemical or um, any reaction. It's about uh, balancing the sweetness. Right, so in goes the honey. And also it's just going to be so much more uh, caramelised and golden. And now we're going to add in the spices. So we've got the salt, pepper, and the red chili flakes. Right, so you want to cook it for about five minutes on high heat, and then you want to saute it um, on low heat for about a further five minutes. And remember, we don't want to lose the shape of the tomatoes. So this is it. I'm not going to move this around anymore. I'm going to turn the le uh, heat low and let this cook for a further five minutes. All right, while that is sauteing on low heat, we are going to dish up. So here's my aubergines and now we're going to cut them up. So at this point, you can either mush them up um, and make them into a puree form or you can just do what I'm doing and just cut them, you know, so you can see the flesh clearly and you can see all the seeds. And then I'm going to get my plate and just plate them in there. Okay, I'm going to get another one and do the same. All right, and then we're going to do the same with the peppers. Now, if you want, you can add the peppers into the tomato sauce mix and cook it off um, with the sauce, and that will just enhance the colour and the flavour of the pepper. But I want to feel the texture of the pepper and um, I want it to be part of the bite that I take with the aubergines. So I'm going to just add it with the aubergines. Okay. There we go. So. And like I mentioned, we're going to add the juice. Right, so here we go. Here's the aubergines and um, here's the peppers and I've put in all the remaining juices. The juices are like gold dust. You do not want to throw them away. They are what contain all the nutrition and the vitamins. In fact, if you remember from my other recipes when we cut the courgettes, I didn't throw away the juice from the courgettes and carrots. We use them in smoothies. You can even use the juice of the aubergines in your smoothies. It's going to add in such a delicious nutty roasty flavour. And actually at this point this looks like a Chinese kind of um, soup. 
Uh, I would happily eat this as it is. But anyway, that's not the point here. Right, we are now going to add on our tomato mixture. And this is done. And then we're going to sprinkle a handful of, uh, let's just pretend this is parsley. We're going to sprinkle a handful of parsley and your patlijan is ready to serve. And then we'll just get a little bit of olive oil just for the sake of making it look like it's a short brought patlijan. Here we go. And I'm going to give you a little taste test. Ramadan is over so I can taste our recipes now and I'm going to tell you with my sound effects how delicious it is. Mmm. I wish I could transport the taste to you. It is so lovely. So, that, there we go. There's a patlijan drip dish. Hope you enjoyed that. And now we're going to do a quick, quick, quick um, baba ghanoush, which is also not going to take that much time. Now with the remaining, um, with the remaining aubergines, I'm going to be making a baba ghanoush dip. Baba ghanoush is a Mediterranean um, dip, but like I said with the uh, patlijan, you can have baba ghanoush as the main dish as well, entirely up to you. And baba ghanoush is actually so much, so much easy, so easy. You don't really need to cook anything once you've done the aubergines. So for baba ghanoush, we need our roasted aubergines, we've still got some pepper in there. Um, we need one lemon or half a lemon and we need tahini now I don't have tahini so I'm gonna be making my own tahini which is so easy and so simple and in fact it's just gonna be more of a kind of taste um, delicious taste and then you also need some garlic which we've got some mince so my my idea is always when you're making one thing with a particular vegetable or fruit or kind of anything that's unusual, I would make two, three things out of it and um, kind of uh, celebrate that vegetable or that fruit. Like you see me doing with the beetroot, I'll do the same with the aubergines. Right, so let's make the tahini first. Tahini is a sesame seed based um, sort of paste, which is used a lot in uh, Mediterranean, especially Lebanese um, dishes. So we are going to put in one cup of um, sesame seeds in my olive oil, in my blender, and then about two spoons of olive oil um, in the blender. And this is now going to go and blitz for about seconds. Um, if you have a good blender, then you know you really don't have a problem. Um, obviously, if you don't have a good one, you can just just take your time you might need to add a little bit of water um just to get it going okay the sesame seeds are done and now we've got homemade tahini and i haven't made it too purified because i want to be able to taste some of um the bits of the sesame seeds that just gives it such an extra crunch and now we're going to get our aubergines and i forgot to mention this dip is all made in the blender i'm um, you can make it by hand as well but listen nowadays everything is just done to convenience and we've got the blender we've got the convenience and why not use it so in goes in goes the aubergines and any juices that you have left because again they will just add the flavor and now we are going to blitz this the only thing you need to make sure is don't don't add everything in once and blitz it all at once because um some things for example the lemon and the garlic if you blitz them for too long they can give you a bit of a bitter taste and you don't want that okay so now we've got a nice texture with our aubergines and nicely um pureed and now we're going to add in half a lemon that we just squeeze out fresh lemon um one tablespoon of chopped garlic actually i did one and a half there and then um, i'm going to use a little cream cheese into my baba ghanoush just to give it a bit more of a creamy texture actually just one and a half spoon of garlic. this is not you don't have to do this step um you can add yogurt if you like but i like my baba ghanoush a bit rich and then there's something missing yes um a little bit of salt and pepper just a tiny bit not too much and as you can remember from what i said i'm adding the salt and pepper the lemon and the garlic right towards the end because if you um 
if you blitz them for too long they'll give you a bitter taste and you don't really want that so now we've got all our ingredients in here and we're going to put the lid on and then give this a good whiz okay now everything is really nicely whizzed up and now we are going to spoon this out now in a typical baba ganoush you would have a garnish of walnut um, paste um, it's almost like walnut butter um, but it's quite rich it's very very rich and uh, a lot of Lebanese dishes have a you know Mediterranean dishes have a have a garnish of walnut paste but I'm not going to use walnut paste in here because I just find it really really rich and I've put the cream cheese in here already um, so I don't really need any kind of addition or help right there's our baba ganoush just give it a nice uh, kind of spread and then we're just going to cook this with a little bit of olive oil again and we will sprinkle a few this is optional it's up to you sprinkle a few chili flakes and then I'm gonna get my let's imagine it's parsley my imaginary parsley and there we go there's our baba ganoush ready so easy so simple and we have um our baba ganoush there and then we have our patlijan which i'm having to reassemble because my kids have already gone in diving into it and um, as you can see from the evidence here and um, so i've had to hide it away and save this for dinner because this is going to be part of our dinner um we're just going to roast some uh, sweet potatoes and uh, some vegetables and we're going to have uh, baba ghanoush and patlijan um, on the sides and uh, so I hope you enjoyed this dish uh, these recipes and once again you know it's entirely up to do up to you how you serve them how you have them you can have them as main meals you can have them um, you can use a baba ghanoush as a spread on your vegetables as a spread on toast you can use uh, um, patlijan, you know, any way you like. So there you go, ladies. Hope you enjoyed. And I shall see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye.